So the same thing always happens when a new device launches. The media gets review units ahead of the official launch, and we get to use them while we write our review. Then the press embargo lifts, every outlet posts their reviews and videos at the same time, writers and commenters go back and forth, and it's a huge frenzy of opinion and buzz for about a day. And then it all goes away. Sure, there's some follow-up coverage, but after that initial blast, almost no one revisits the device to see how well it's aged. Because we're all on to the next big thing already. So let's do something about it. Let's have a look at a device after a couple of weeks after release and when it's not shiny and new anymore. I'm Jaime Rivera with Pocket Now. This is the iPhone 5S. And this is episode 30 of After the Buzz. It's been almost six months since we last reviewed the iPhone 5S, and even though we usually follow up on devices after the buzz within a three-month period, let's just say we waited on this one on purpose. With devices like the Galaxy S5, Xperia Z2, or even the yet-to-be-announced all-new HTC One coming soon, or better yet, with the rumors of an iPhone 6 being ready for June, would it still be worth it for you to buy an iPhone 5S today? Well, the answer is kind of complicated. This is the latest and greatest iPhone, and as such, great design, build quality, feel in hand, and usability are a given. Apple has once again kept it safe with the design, and that's not necessarily a bad thing since this space gray model looks gorgeous, even if compared to the old iPhone 5. I've been using the iPhone 5S since launch date, and it's held up quite well, though there is a story behind it. This device we're filming is actually a replacement unit that I swapped last month because of some software issues that I'll mention later. I actually decided to experiment using the first device with a case for four months and this one without it. As a result, even though the iPhone with the TPU case fell off my hand quite a few times, it almost looked like new when I returned it to Apple, with the exception of some minor scratches in the aluminum back due to lint because of the case. This iPhone, on the other hand, has fallen off my hand once, and you will see the minor dings on the chamfered edges, so just keep in mind that with or without a case, you will still have to pick your poison. The internals are a different story. It does sport the world's first 64-bit mobile chip, which is great, right? Well, I really have a hard time telling the difference between using this phone and the old iPhone 5 or even the iPhone 5C. It does boot significantly faster, and there are games that load faster, and I'll even tell you that the phone charges significantly faster than any of its predecessors as well, but that's about it. I was really looking forward to the M7 Motion coprocessor for my runs, but I'll admit that I still can't find the improvements in my runs or in any other fitness activity that I do. All these features seem to be more of a marketing stunt than anything, and it's odd coming from a company that's not famous for gimmicks. The only thing that really makes this phone stand apart from anything in the market and really worth buying is Touch ID. In a word, it's flawless, and even though it was a little buggy in the early days, that was fixed with iOS 7.1. Even if Apple could have done a better job in integrating Touch ID with other applications with your fingerprint as your only password, I'll admit that I find myself annoyed in having to slide to unlock any other phone as Touch ID is pretty much, again, flawless. Now, software is a love and hate story. Some love iOS 7, some hate it. I'm on the list of people that actually do like it, but never have I owned a buggier iPhone ever than the iPhone 5S. I had to swap the first device because I would continuously find the phone resetting itself out of the blue, and I find it odd since I still keep the iPhone 5 and I didn't see any of these bugs there. iOS 7.1 has fixed these continuous crashes, and really if it wasn't for that, I would have no complaints with the device when it comes to how the OS runs on it. It breezes through applications like a champ, and the App Store offerings aren't getting any smaller. The iPhone is still your go-to choice with the best selection of applications, and the coolest part is that after six months, I would say that 90% of my applications are already updated to the new UI, which speaks much better than almost every other platform out there. Using the iPhone as my daily driver for six months has also been a love and hate story. Love for the most part, though. Again, I've come to fall in love with Touch ID, and I do feel that it's made my experience with this particular iPhone more pleasant. I also have to admit that I love the camera. It's far better than any iPhone camera in the past in low light, and it does do some decent competition with devices that offer optical limit stabilization even though this device lacks the hardware. Whether you enjoy the simplicity of taking burst shots without making any changes to any settings or 
getting some cool slow motion video, this is still a great camera phone to beat and honestly it hardly ever lets me down. I find the same pleasant experience in phone calls. People say I sound great on their end and they sound great on mine and that's been consistent on almost every iPhone that I've used, but even more interesting is the speaker quality. I mean, you don't get stereo speakers here and you don't get boom sound like on the HTC One, but once we compare these phones, and to be honest with you, the iPhone 5S sounds great. Again, not amazing like HTC's One, but it sounds great. I guess my only hate story with this phone is battery life, and it's been the same story with almost every iPhone, sadly. With this phone, I actually find it to be particularly mixed. Sometimes it's okay, never great, again, okay. And sometimes the phone heats up just out of the blue for no particular reason, and my battery falls like a rock in six to eight hours. I haven't figured out what triggers that, but it could be that iOS is not really that well enhanced for the 64-bit processor or, or something else. I've updated this phone to iOS 7.1 and I still find the same problem regardless of the two iPhones that I tested. So bottom line, after using the iPhone 5S for the last six months, would I still recommend that you buy it? You know, this is funny. Every other iPhone that I've done an After the Buzz on, I've said absolutely, but for the first time ever, I'll say that it depends. If you're out to buy an iPhone, then by all means, instead of buying the iPhone 5C, please get the iPhone 5S. Those extra $100 are worth it. If you own an iPhone 5, then you don't need Touch ID, then the answer is no. You don't need to upgrade. This is pretty much almost the same phone. If you come from any previous iPhone, then the answer is yes. Should you wait until June to see what the iPhone 6 is like? Well, if you can, then do. But the last time that Apple launched an iPhone in June was the iPhone 4, and that was four years ago. So that's kind of hard to predict. Should you buy this device when compared to any of the Android phones that we've seen this year? I would say yes if you're an iPhone person, but then again, the all-new HTC One could easily change my mind. Again, the iPhone 5S has been a good phone, but I feel that Apple could have probably done a better job here, and that's funny since the iPhone 5 was great. That's it for episode 30 of After the Buzz and the iPhone 5S. Thank you very much for watching. Do you currently own an iPhone 5S? What's your experience been, especially after iOS 7.1? Leave us a comment down below and make sure you also follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can follow me on Twitter at Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you on the next video.